Okay, so everyone is going to override your number to new number. So, so here is not required, not at all required your old number because we no need to call that number anyway. That number is not working, not worked. So we no need to call. So we no need to save that number. So whatever the new number is there, that we are going to override. That we are going to save. The same situation here also. So whenever we not required, we no need to track the historical data. We no need to track the history. In that situation, they are going to implement the SCD type one functionality. Okay, clear, guys? When they are going to implement the SCD type one functionality? Yes, sir. So whenever they want, they no no need to track the historical data. In that scenarios, they are going to implement the SCD one functionality in the real time. So ninety percent of the tables are SCD type one tables. Okay. In the real time, ninety percent of the tables are SCD type one tables only. Okay. Next, come to the SCD type two. As of now, we discussed about the SCD type one. So SCD type one means so where if any modifications happen in source data, for existing source data, okay, we are going to modify that data into it is going to override into target table. So here. They are not maintaining the any historical any history. We are going to not maintaining any history. What is the digit advantage, guys? Here, history is not maintaining. That is the digit advantage. History not maintained. History not maintained. Yeah, that is the digit advantage of the SCD type one. Okay, but ninety percent of the tables they are going to use in the This no need to tell guys in the interview. Just I'm, I'm sake of you. I'm just explaining. So ninety percent is a no need to say the interview. Okay, but your understanding I'm saying telling. So ninety percent of the tables are they're going to implement in the SCD type one tables. This point no need to tell in the interview. Okay. The same situation will take the same thing for SCD type two. How they're going to handle the SCD type two in the So my source table will be like this, okay? Thousand here, okay? My target table. So they are going to implement the EMP underscore ref key like that. It will be there, okay? Or if okay, leave it later. I will explain. So what is a series type two means? So if any modifications happen in your existing source data. Okay, so it will going to add as a new record. We are going to add as a new record into target table. Here we are going to override the table. Here we are adding that record into new new record. Means here here we are we are maintaining the history. For SCD type two, we are maintaining the full history. We are maintaining the full history. Okay, means what happen now in this case? Is if you have increased to fifteen hundred, what happen guys? So it's going to handle one zero one RAM. Here earlier will be thousand is there. Here now fifteen hundred. So here ten. So like this, it will happen in the real time, guys. So here we are getting the earlier will be the salary will be thousand for RAM salary will be earlier thousand. Now it will be fifteen hundred. Okay, here we are maintaining the history in this table. While implementing the SCD type T, we are going to maintain the history. Okay, but SCD type one, we are not maintaining any history. Clear, guys? If any modifications happen in the source data, existing source data, that data we are going to maintain in the as it add as a new record into the target table. So we are going to maintain the full history as as part of the SCD type two. Okay, what is the advantages, guys? Here, what is the digit advantages? Tell me now. Duplicate rows. Ah, uh, sorry, guys. It's maintain the duplicate rows. 
No duplicate. I will tell you how to handle this one. History type two. So as of now, just we can uh, take a consideration. We are maintaining the history. I'll tell you the duplicate okay. records. How they are going to handle the duplicate records? I am going to tell you guys. Okay. okay. So, but advantages will be here. We are going to maintain the history. That is advantage. History. Okay. Maintaining the history. Here we are not maintaining the history. Here we are going to maintain the maintain the history of the data, historical data. Okay. What is the disadvantage? Size is mean. Exactly. Size. So here day to day, the day to day. For example, here one lakh records are there. So one lakh records. Is there any modifications happen? No, it is going to increase the one lakh plus one lakh, two lakh records. It will happen size. Okay. So day to day, so table size is going to increase drastically here for a series type two. So the type table size is going to increase because of the we are going to maintain the history. So automatically, performance is going to decrease. For example, your two GB data is there. We can't able to select star from the table name. It will take some time to retrieve the data because of the Huge amount of data is available in the your table, so automatically performance is going to decrease. Going to decrease due to huge amount of data, large amount of data or huge amount of data. Okay, clear, guys. These are the advantages or disadvantages of the SCD type two. Okay, so we know what is SCD one. We know what is SCD type two. So SCD one, we are going to override the if any modifications happen on the source side. That data we are going to override into target table. So we are not maintaining any history. Clear? And SCD type two, if any modifications happen on the source data, existing source data. So modified data is going to add as a New record into your target table means you are going to maintain the history. Okay, guys, clear up to the concept is clear here. Yes, sir. Yeah. So now how to handle this one situation? Now you see one zero employee number for one employee. They are going to maintain. They are going to give only one record, one person, right? But here one zero one, one zero one, two times are there. So it will as you said the duplicate. For this re this reason, they are going to introduce the surrogate key in data warehousing. It won't be there any primary keys, guys. The concept it won't be available. Okay, in data warehousing, there is no primary key concept for the data warehousing. So here they are going to implement the surrogate key concept. Okay, I am going to explain what is surrogate key. EMP underscore. Just I am going to give the one more column name. EMP underscore ref key, okay. Employee ref key. This is the surrogate key. We call it as a surrogate key. Surrogate key is act as a kind of primary key, okay. Surrogate key is act as a primary key. So that I am going to explain into the at the time of the uh, SQL concept. What is primary key? Those concepts I am going to explain in the SQL. So as of now, just this is a surrogate key. Treat as a surrogate key. This one, I'll explain you what is surrogate key. All those things. So it is a surrogate key is nothing but the it's a sequential generator, guys. Sequential number always is going to based on the current value. It is going to generate the new value. The first time will be one. Example, take first time it will be one. Okay. Second will be two, three. Now it based on the current value. The next record is going to give the four. So like that is going to add the sequence number for the so it won't allow the duplicate records it won't allow the any it won't load the null records here so unique value is there in the surrogate key this we call as a surrogate now it will be take so one one zero one there is if you treat as there is no duplicate record okay so like that they're going to handle the data versus they're going to maintain the historical data okay and also In a series type two, how they are going to differentiate? For example, one more record happen. For example, here twenty happen. This record. So what happen here? Five, one zero one, 
wrong. 1500. How it will be 20? And 20. 20 it will happen. Okay. But we don't know when is the 1500, when is the 1000. We don't know. Right. So from which date to which date the 1000 salary is there effective for him? Or which date to which date is 1500 is effective? And which date to which date is under department 10? Now which date to which date is under department 10? Thus kind of information we are not clear in this case. Right. So that is the reason. They are going to add few more columns, the information from date, okay, and then end date, and then they are going to add one more flag, active flag. So, based on these three columns, based on these three columns, they are going to difference, differentiate the, which column is the active record currently active, which record is the historical record. They are going to differentiate the based on the from date, end date, and the active flag. Okay. So, this end date and the active flag will be for historical, means for current records, whatever the record will be, this is the current record. Okay. For these records, the active flag will be always 1. Okay. Here the active will be 1 for the current records. Okay. And the end date should be always will be max date. What is the, our calendar? What is the max date, guys? 